All right, we are getting into, I don't know if it's a nitty gritty, the rough part. I, I don't know what to call it, but it's, it, it's, it's time to go. It's time to go in this off season, okay? It's, you know, we're getting, we're, them we're so close to like, to the season, but just so far away at the same time. Uh, it's, look, listen, it's the NFL. It is. It rules. Yeah. So, you know, I, when you can talk about free agency and the draft and the release of the schedule, I mean. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. People, it's a lot to take in, right? It's always it's it's always something, right? It, right, even, no, right. Even yeah. it's like you know, sleepy periods. It's always something, right? There's always something to talk about. Welcome into the Key Problem Podcast. I'm your host DJ Bill, and I got back with sports director Jeff Taylor. Hi, back man. again. How you how you doing? I'm good, man. Yeah, how you, ready. How you, I'm ready. I, I'm sure, and you're, you're. I know. Uh, you're you're getting almost geared up for high school sports. We got, yeah, we got all kinds not of stuff. Too, not, not too far away. I nope. know. Uh, you know, we put up a story on the site about the new, uh, should I call it soccer or football team that we got uh, right. in the area. The ladies, so the cool. Ascent. Yeah, that, that's that's very Carolina cool. Ascent. Listen, they had, you know. And those jerseys. Oh, the jerseys right. are, are literally lit. Um, yeah. Beautiful colors and stuff. And listen, hey, kudos to them, man. I mean, listen. And then you had the Copa game, which had, what, 80,000 and stuff. So, yeah. um, you know, it's it's. Football, it's not football, football, right. but you know what I mean. But you know, it's gonna be awesome to watch the ladies go at it. And 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 I newest heard, professional team. I I heard too that you know John had a little bit of extracurricular in his live shot. He, last night he from that, it was so. it was hilarious. He was standing up a group of like eighty fans or whatever, and they started dancing, singing. Next thing I know, I couldn't see John. So it was kind of interesting. <laughs> you know, and it's funny, like you never know what you're gonna get in it. Live it, shot, you never know. It's it's one of those things too where it kind of peeks into what soccer has become around this area too. absolutely you know because to, to host an event like that in charlotte yep right but at the same time you know to, to see like you know international play kind of see like how big these tournaments have been and for charlotte to be kind of a host stadium in, in some form or fashion that's, listen i was in uptown i was in uptown as you know um and i was covering the ascent and their um unveiling of their jerseys and you know there was an energy i mean like i know you get tailgating for college football you know mm-hmm. uptown and when they have the um uh what is the the duke's mayo bowl to kick off the season and stuff and then you get you know the panthers and stuff soccer fans are rowdy man yeah i was a little are. stunned i was like here we go they um, getting in like bills fans territory yeah, they might have gone beyond it <laughs> they, they they they're they're close yeah. i mean but it, it was impressive so kudos to uh you know the city itself for bringing something like that in and mm-hmm. um, but yeah like you said soccer um it's 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 definitely um it, it's it's what people want to see somewhat. Yeah. And and to host, you know, kind of peeking back into one of the last episodes and one of the things that we talked about and I also talked about with Jack, too, is these renovations, they were approved. Right. right? So, you know, at the time we were thinking, you know, will they, won't be, you know, right. will they, won't they? But now they're approved and it's interesting to see an event of that magnitude come to Charlotte sure. as Charlotte kind of gears up to, to continue to just build the city. You know, when you think about the renovations, though, and I don't know that, that I've spoken to you about it or whatever, but, you know, to me it was like, I, I get them, but I would have just rather, I mean, B of A is awesome, don't get yeah. me wrong, but it's up there. Mm-hmm. And putting some, you know, the, the video boards outside and kind of empty in one end zone, I think, or whatever, and they're building that kind of like, I get it. Yeah. Would you have been better off just saying, hey, let's, you know, let's let's build um, something new. But I think the one thing it did show was that, okay, you know, Tepper threw in some money, mm-hmm. but also the city has said, okay, you know, we'll make the commitment too. So yeah. it was a good commitment on both parts to go, hey, the Panthers are going to be here. Yeah. Would I like to see a new stadium? Yes. Yeah. I don't think they did enough where Charlotte could host a Super Bowl or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I think it's just enough to kind of, yeah. Make it exciting. And, and it's interesting because that was a lot of the talk, at least from from what I've heard from Dave Tepper's point of view, is like, you know, he wants this to be a city that can host these big events. Right. You know, and of course, we've seen Bank of America Stadium host different artists and right. different concerts and stuff like that and, and other events outside of football and right. outside of soccer, right? So, like, it's one of those things where, you know, the Inspection Center, of course, too, like Bodingo's Coliseum, have, you know, all of these different venues that we have around the city, we've seen them, you know, host, you know, big names. But, of course, you know, you, you want to make the stadium appealing enough to continue to bring in those big names. Right. Continue to bring in even bigger events. Right. Right, even bigger sporting events, team events, stuff like that. So it, it'll definitely be, you know, it'll definitely be interesting because I know – at least in in my opinion, from from what I what, what I think of, and this is kind of just hitting on the renovations too, you know, Jack made a good point. He was like, you know, it didn't feel like 
they were making enough renovations with the money that they were being, you know, given to do it. Right. Or the money they were putting forward to do it. Uh, but at the same time, it's like Charlotte isn't really a big like wrestling town either. Right. And that's another big event that I feel like doesn't come to Charlotte a whole a whole lot. Right. It does from time to time, but not not too terribly often. Right. So it, it's one of those things, too, where you where you think about it and you're like, you know, you know what what's the missing piece? You know, for for Charlotte to be, uh, you know, up there with the Atlantis of the world, up there with, uh, you know, some the New York and all these others. Right. You know, of course, Charlotte is its own city and, and is what it is. But at the same time, it's like, how can it reach those those heights? You think? Right. Well, you know, I, I think they're doing enough to make it exciting mm-hmm. for the fans, enough to make it exciting for the city. I think the cool part about it, though, is to like the the renovations versus a new stadium. Yeah. Where would you have put the new stadium? Because the one thing I do love about B of A is it is uptown. Yeah. It is in the city. Yeah. So you can, you know, and it does great for the city in terms of economy and stuff. So, you know, where some, you know, where some people, uh, I remember going to Detroit back in the day when they had the old Silverdome. That was like 30 miles outside of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, come on. Or like NRG Stadium for Houston. Yeah. You know, it's not directly in the city. It's, you know, 10, 15 miles outside of it. So mm-hmm. I, the thing I love is let's do the renovations. Let's up it, our game as much as we can, but let's keep it uptown. Because, you know, to me, like with the Knights, when they were out in, what, Rock Hill or whatever, mm-hmm. I'm like, or Fort Mill, whatever it was, I was like, come on. Like, yeah. you know, you, it, it was you know, now you got Truist, which to me is one of the best minor league ballparks yeah. in the nation. But it's that uptown location. So yeah. kudos to them. And I think, like I said, it's enough to give them a little excitement and keep some of the events that we have and bring in more events. Yeah, and it's nice for, like, you know, the views and everything, too. Because even thinking about Truist Field, like, seeing oh, the, sky the skyline, you know, as you Listen, watch Listen, Charlotte's a small game. city. I get it. But when that thing's lit at night, yeah. it's gorgeous. Yeah. Do you think the Do you think these renovations are eventually going to make the fans happy or is this going to be the product on the field you think that is, is going to be the determining factor oh because you know fans are upset i mean we've we've heard fans are upset right they're not happy they're I, frustrated about it and you know dave tepper's rubbed some people the wrong way so so anything that comes out of his mouth fans are not going to be a fan of anyway I, it's going to help but you gotta listen you gotta give the fans something to be excited about yeah i mean you know it, you know, I've, 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 you, you got to, yeah, you got to have excitement. I've seen teams, you know, when the, the Saints were horrible, couldn't fill the Superdome. Yeah. You know, they win, you know, guess what? Drew Brees, you know, then they get sold out stadiums. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's still more of a product of, of, of that. Um, in the NFL, you know, if they don't watch it, yeah. Um, you know, they're on the verge of like really kind of taking away some of what the game's all about. Mm-hmm. And if you don't watch it, um, <laughs> You know, it's, it's going to be a lot more than just the product out on the field. Yeah. Um, if you know what I'm getting at in yeah. terms of like the kickoff, all that, all the new rule, like, n- you know, no. Yeah, and it's interesting too because, uh, you know, this is kind of on topic of what we had previously discussed right. before the show. But you know, things come up as you go through the show, and I want to ask you all out there, you know, watching or listening as well, uh, whether you're on all the major podcasting platforms or BayAquaSports.com. But I, I, I want to kind of, I, I wonder, right? What is it? What what's the drawing appeal for for fans for for you all? Would you rather watch it at home in your big screen TV? No, don't worry about the heat. Don't worry about the elements. Or would you rather be in the stadium with the fans, like excited to see you know to see everybody, right? Like I mean, I'm curious to what your opinion on that is too. But at the same time, like you know, what's the driving factor for keeping fans in the stands? Of course, winning. You know, uh, that's the probably that's probably top of the top. Even if you're in the oldest stadium, if you're the most win, if you're the winningest team, where you know people are gonna come watch it, right? You know, I think for me, it's it's the experience of the entire day itself, and I will go to my <laughs> I'll go to my team, the Titans. Mm-hmm. You know, listen, I've been to seven games in Nashville. Yeah, it is an awesome experience, winning or losing. Yeah. It is, but but that's because Nashville itself. Mm-hmm. You know, you can walk to the stadium, you can walk back to Broadway, and there's all the, you know, yeah. all the bars and restaurants and stuff. And it's just, it's the experience of the city itself. Yeah. You know, Charlotte has some cool stuff as you walk along the city and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, to me, it's a whole game day experience. At the end of the day, you know, I at, at the end of the day, until we get to November or December, 
I'm not going to sit in 100 degree heat at Bank of yeah. America Stadium and watch sure. the Panthers. If you know what I'm getting at, yeah. I'd much rather sit in my house with my big screen TV, mm-hmm. you know, have a beer in my hand and yeah. enjoy enjoy the day that way. So I think it's it, it's becoming more about the experience than the game itself. Yeah, and you can see that by going to college. You know, go to college games, go down to South Carolina for the day, mm-hmm. and get there early and. You know, their whole experience. You know, I've got a fr- fr- kid who just finished his freshman year at Tennessee. Yeah. To go to Knoxville on game day oh, yeah. is crazy. So, you know what I'm getting at? So, mm-hmm. I think it's – and listen, well, Neyland Stadium is, is – like, okay, take Neyland Stadium. Yeah. It is old. Uh-huh. It is kind of um, rafters and creaky and stuff. Yeah. But it's just – it's Neyland. Yeah. So, does that make sense? So, mm-hmm. I think for the cities that don't have the, the Fenway Parks or the – you know, back in the day with, you know, I asked Steeler fans, Yeah. you want Three Rivers or you want Heinz Field? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. That's true. Or whatever they're going to call it now. You but. know, well, yeah, whatever it's going to be called now, whatever the uh, stadium could be called. But you know what I'm getting at? I think yeah. it, to me it's it's more of the whole experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and and, and I w- for me it's cool to go to Tennessee because I can get away and just go to Nashville. Yeah. I think for away fans, I mean, for teams when they're going to their away games, yeah. they might like it better than their home games. Right, yeah. So. That's, that's true, and it, it, it just makes you wonder because – you know, I, I've, I've been thinking about this for a while, especially with, you know, there's red zone. There's so many different ways oh, to watch the game. Sure. And, I mean, for some people, there's highlights. That's it. That's all I want. I don't care about the whole game. I just want to see who won and who lost. Jump on the next day and watch it, the highlights on YouTube. Yeah, so it's like, it, it just makes me wonder, you know, and, you know, I, I, I haven't been able to go to a game as a, as a fan yet uh, around here, but I'm, I'm curious when I finally do to see the differences that I've seen, you know, from other stadiums as well. Because, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, I, I want to see what the game day atmosphere is, what you right. know, what it's like. Right. Uh, you know, but of course you got to have the product on the field to, to make you feel like, okay, yeah, I want to, I want to get out and get out and brave the weather a little bit. Right. Uh, you know, and, and walk around a little bit to, to, to get to my seat and, you know, pay these ridiculous prices. For right. No, exactly. You know, no. So. so it's, you know, it's just at the end of the day, and it, it's a lot like NASCAR. I don't know how many of you fans out there are NASCAR fans, but, you know, um, you know, the product now for NASCAR is horrible. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's like, do I want to go to a race or do I want to sit in my, you know, and watch it on, on TV or whatever with the technology that's crazy enough nowadays? But NASCAR got away from their tracks that made them what they were, and, you know, then they got rid of, rid of the cars that yeah. made them what they were when there was more of the, the brand, um, you know, locking into a, you know, a brand. So, it's just it, it's it's kind of a compilation of a lot of things. Yeah, and I think I think one more thing that I wanted to mention too. I think the the game has to be fun, right? Not only just between the lines, but we're talking about the crowd interaction, right? Whether it be the the people that are beside you, or you know the PA person or whoever is you know right. kind of emceeing the game. Right. That's the that that's always the cool part about like baseball games. It's always so fan interactive. It feels like, especially over at Night Stadium, you know, it's always. Yeah, well, know. and I get, I mean, I've been to, you know, I've been to, um, I've been fortunate enough to go to, with my kids to go to three, three schools. And you go to the University of South Carolina and go to Willie B Stadium. Mm-hmm. I know there are atmospheres out there that are great. Yeah. I, if, I've never been to a better one, though, where like from the minute you get there to the minute the game's over with. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been to App State, which is just, you know, Kid Brewer Stadium, which is not the biggest stadium around, but that game day yeah. atmosphere is crazy. Yeah. You know, Tennessee, you mm-hmm. know, uh, it's it's um it, it, it's kind of all over the place, but Tennessee might have you know, they play Rocky Top a million mm-hmm. times. Yeah. Um and it's kind of the same thing over and over and over again yeah. with the App and and uh, South Carolina. Sometimes you don't know what you're getting. Yeah. And it's just it's crazy that way. So, um you haven't been to a game here I yet? Think, have I haven't. Been? No, really? I right. haven't. And we're going to get you. We gonna, I, I, we, definitely, all right. I definitely all right. have we, to. It, it's funny. I, ha- I haven't. And it's, it's on my bucket list okay. of things to do. All right. Uh, it, it just, you know, it, of course, it depends on who, who they're playing right. and stuff like that. And, and You know, I'm, you are a member of the media, though. I know. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I, sh- I should be able to, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you, you know, you know, I should be able to get the media. The press pass, box is you know, not a bad place to watch from. I, I've heard, I, I've, I've heard. Maybe I'll put that on my we'll, we'll, list for this, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, this upcoming year. Let me make a note here. <laughs> get DJ. Press. But it, it's funny though because I almost, you know, you mentioned like the college, the college atmosphere, and there's not a lot of NFL stadiums that give that, if any. No, yeah. And it reminds me a little bit of, uh, of when 
Yeah, the, you know, the Seattle Supersonics moved to OKC. Right. And that crowd was raucous. Right. They didn't sit down until you scored a point. They were, you know, it felt almost like a college feel to it. Right. And, you know, college is just, it's just different. And, I mean, even, and you know this, uh, you know, hi, there's some high schools around here that just, like, they get wild. Oh, like, yeah, no question. Rock, you know. <laughs> no question. You know, you'd feel like you were in a college stadium or an NFL stadium. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I strive for the Panthers to have that. And, of course, you know, success is, is – goes hand in hand with that but at the same time i'm sitting here thinking like you know could that be a problem too you know the fans aren't enjoying themselves uh even in the game right and it's like you know it's taken away from the product that we're you know that we end up being able to see even even the game day lead up well and you know I, i think the problem too has become like when you think about the nfl there are 32 teams yeah 32 cities no, and not even that because there's <laughs> New York has, you know, yeah, whatever. It's true. But when you talk about, you know, 32 cities in the United States that have NFL teams, mm-hmm. and we're one of them. Yeah. I think we lose sight of that as fans. Yeah. I mean, do you really know? I mean, when it comes to Charlotte, North Carolina, if you're a sports fan, how are you not like the happiest person around? You know what I'm getting at? Yeah. I mean, whether you're, whatever fan you are or not, but if, I mean, you've got the NBA, you got NFL, you got NASCAR, you got soccer, mm-hmm. you know, it's. You got minor league, some of the best minor league hockey and baseball. Yeah. It's like we take kind of start to take it for granted, mm-hmm. um, I can see that. and 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 we go to the stadium and we want to pick out all the negative stuff, yet we don't realize yeah. the blessing that hey we got an NFL team. Yeah, and that's kind of the perks of you know what you can't what you can't maybe do in renovations you can do in fan experience. Absolutely, you know, that's the that's Absolutely. the main point I'm trying yep. to make is I feel like. You know, if you can make the experience good, like, get people up, get people rowdy, get people excited. Right. You know, especially, you know, for the games, especially this upcoming season that, season that are winnable. We're talking the NFC South games. You know for a fact you can win a – you can get a couple sure. of these games. You can steal a couple of I would of think at games. least. You know, like, yeah. you know, it's it's a competitive division just because of where each team is, you know. So, I think that's another part of it, too. But I'm, I'm very interested to see what these Panthers are going to do because, you know, I, I feel like it's a lot of – a lot of guys with a lot to prove. And I think it might be some coaches with a little bit to prove, too. You know, looking looking for jobs, potentially looking right. to, you know, just further their career, you know, continue, you know, be a head coach. You know, Dave Canellis not having a lot of coordinator experience. Right. But obviously he was able to impress enough to get to the job. Get, to get the job. Like it, right. love it, hate it, or whatever you want to do. But he was, he you know, he impressed enough. Right. You know, he showed – that he could work with, uh, you know, young and impro- uh, unproven, whatever you right. want to say, quarterbacks enough that, you know, he deserves the job here. So, you know, it, it'll definitely be interesting to see. But, you know, I do want to ask uh, for you all out there and also for you, you know, who do you feel like has the mo- most approved? We'll go an offensive option, defensive option, and, a, and a, a coach's option, and more so with the coaches, not even necessarily anything to prove, but just more so like who could be next in line. Right. Hopefully not around here, but I mean, you know. Well, no, exactly. In another right. city, yeah, absolutely. In one of those other thirty-one cities, right? L- listen, at the end of the day, on the offense, it's got to be your man. It's got to be Rice. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, you 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 game a shot year one. Um, you know, the growing pains hopefully are gone. He's yeah. got some offensive line in front of him. Mm-hmm. I think he's got some wev- weapons. I still think, um, you know. Uh, you know, Xavier is going to be, I, to me, the steal of the draft at wide receiver. Mm-hmm. I think Xavier Leggett was, I think he's the steal of the draft, to be honest with you. I, it's just, he reminds me yeah. uh, so much of Debo Samuel um, that you can do so many things with him. So the table is there. And, and listen, you, you don't have to go to the playoffs. You don't have to set the world on fire. Mm-hmm. Just take a step up. Yeah, I've seen too many quarterbacks that after year one fall into this kind of land of, you know, mm-hmm. Forgotten toys, almost like yeah. Santa, a, a, a Christmas yeah. reference, um, and and you take the likes of you know Marcus Mariota or Jameis Winston. I mean, yeah, you know studs, and then neither you know what you know what's going on. So for me, the, it, it just improve. Yeah, and 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 he was. I mean, there were games. You know, there was that little light. Mm-hmm. Let's see the light every game. Yeah, um, and and just take those steps forward, and even if it's baby steps. At least give the fans to go. Okay. This is a you know three four year deal, but we're go- we we got our go- you yeah. need by the end of this year, people need to understand and believe that you're the guy. Yeah, and and I think, you know, 
the one thing about I I don't have Bryce Young as as my guy with maybe something. I, I think he has something to prove, obviously. But I think I don't know if I'd say he has necessarily the most to prove, right? Because I think you know unless you're Josh Rosen, you're you're probably gonna get another opportunity even if this season goes bad, right? You, you're gonna you might have a shorter leash next year, right? But you know you're probably gonna you know. There's, I think there's going to be improvements. Right. You have there's more talent around you. Right. The offensive line is obviously better. Right. So, I think you have a, a head coach that kind of probably fits what you want. You know what you want to do. A new head coach. You know you both can learn from each other. Right. So I think for me, I say Miles Sanders. I can see that too. Yes. I mean, you bring in a veteran to to have some leadership and to show something. Yeah. And it was pretty much. And, and I think that's because the offensive line is better, so he should get better. Right. Right? Well, now, you had no passing game either to kind of scare people away. Like, I mean, yeah, you know, they didn't have much of an offensive line. Put eight in the box. Yeah. You know, and, you know, yeah. you know, they didn't have to worry about the pass as much. And, and if I can cheat a little bit on the offensive end, I would say Iki Aquano is another one. Yes. You know, because I, he's kind of in, like, prove it, or I, would, I don't know I if I see you in a Carolina uniform next year. He would have to have just an outstanding year, or I think he could be gone. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and I, as sad as that is, I mean, a local guy, yeah. you know, and you know, uh, from you know PD to NC State to you know that. I mean, mm-hmm. it would be sad, but yes, I I, I agree with that too. Yeah. yeah, and and it's like, and it's not. He can win his spot this year, right? right? Like he can come in and just blow everybody away, and it might also help that you got a couple new guards beside you too to help out a little bit, right? Right, so that you know, and a new center and all that, so it might help the guys around you. Might also help you be better, right? But you know, he's he's the uh, he's the blindside guy, so he's the guy that's tasked with protect. protecting Bryce Young probably more than anybody. Right. So I can see that too. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Defensively, what you what you think? I'm still thinking. You go. Okay. For me, I got one in mind, but I want to see if you say it's. I, I think it's an obvious one for all of us and. Uh, and it's not because of lack of talent; it's because of lack of health. And it's JC Horn. JC Horn. Okay, yeah. we're it, on the same page. It, <laughs> I mean, that that was my. I'm gonna be honest with you on the defensive side of the ball. That's the only person I could really think of. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody else has been pr- pretty much consistent or on the field. I mean, listen, they they had a good D. Yeah. I mean, they did. They yeah. were in ball games, and and you had opportunities and stuff like that. So overall, and it wasn't you know a a defense full of like superstar names. Yeah. So you know. And which will get us to the next point, you know, mm-hmm. when we talk about coaching and stuff. But yeah, JC, listen, you got to be on the field. Yeah. In the NFL, you've got to be on the field. And if not, you know, I take Caleb Farley from the Titans or whatever. He hasn't been healthy at all. And they're like, you can have a chance this year, but it's going to be on special teams. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like, so for JC, you, you, when you invest that high with draft pick and stuff like that, you got it. You got to be on the field. Yeah. And I think the other thing is to, and just like you said, it's, it's because he was a high draft pick, which is why there's so much pressure on him. Right. Because you can look at uh, a couple of years back with, with the Ravens and Tavon Young. You know, he had ACL tear after ACL tear. But once he was finally healthy, he was one of the top corners. He got at it. And, you know, he got paid for that. So right. that's another one of those things where, you know, whatever it, whatever, whatever it is you got to do, condition, whatever the conditioning, you know, you got to maybe do a little extra. Right. I, don't, I don't know. You know, I, you know, of course, you know, these are the highest of the highest level of athletes. And they know – what their body needs, right? And, you know, obviously a lot of that not even necessarily in their control. So you know, I I think yeah, I I, I definitely I think we're on the same page here with with, with J C Horn because, uh, you know, I, I want to see him be successful. and I think he could possibly be one of those like shut down type guys, one of those guys you don't want to. Absolutely, his I mean, I I watched him play at South Carolina. I mean, the man he was a stud. Yeah. So you've you've got to get back to that. You got to get on the field and get your confidence up and at least produce. Yeah. If not. I, w- I will say, too, going back to the offense real quick, Miles Sanders has a lot to prove, too, because right now, just the raw, uh, way too early uh, depth chart, he's like the third-string running back. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's, you know, you're behind Jonathan Brooks, a rookie, and Chuba Hubbard, Chuba, yeah. who, I mean, we know Miles Sanders is good. It's just, does he have it left, or what, you know, what what what's... What was the problem last year? Because I don't want to say does he have it left. Because I mean, obviously, without with the exception of last year, I mean he's been. You know, I guess silent. my my question sometimes is, in a pro athlete's mentality, and I'm not one, never been one, or whatever like that. 
do they ever get to the point of going, is this year worth it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're, we're horrible. We have no offensive line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and Maybe why, trying to why, save face for the next year. Why am I going to bust my hump? Yeah. That's yeah. – and, and I'd hate to think that when mm-hmm. uh, you've got guys who would – when the NFL is the you know cream of the crop, and you how many what percentage of football players yeah. become NFL players? Yeah, you figure you would go one hundred and fifty percent all the time. Yeah. But is there a point of going? And also, you know, because you're Miles Sanders, like you're you're not you know you're not Jonathan Brooks coming in right. Having something you're not Trouba Hubbard, right? Right. right. Like you, you're you're Miles Sanders. And Miles Sanders probably thinks, okay, if I'm not here next year, well, I can be, you know, somewhere. Yeah. Somebody's gonna need me. Yeah. That's true. But you're also in a very new age generation for running backs mm-hmm. where it's like money's just not flowing for them. Well, they anymore. ain't going for them. And, and yeah. number two, you know, who's going to line up and run the ball 30 times? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, 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 yeah. I mean, that's, that's it. So is, I, there a, I could, is there a mindset where you're not going 100%, you're going 85%? Yeah. And I mean, you're he, like, if we're not going anywhere, why yeah. am I busting my hump? To, to, yeah. to make an effort. Yeah, I'd be I mean, it it'd be a tough position to be in, especially when especially once you got to not as meaningful football. You know? Well like, exa- well and for like, the, I mean and what if I mean like the Panthers last year, I mean you were playing non meaningful football halfway through the season it felt if, like. If not before. Yeah. So how do you go through November and December mm. knowing your season is done? Yeah. You're not gonna make the postseason. Yeah. That's 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 tough, and then you know, of course, he gets all the criticism because he's he's the main value well, guy. You're, you know? you're, you're Miles Sanders. You know, he's Miles Sanders. So right. you know, he was one of the big signings from last year. So, right. You know, so coaching wise, who kind of has the most to prove? I th- I think to answer the initial question, I I would probably say uh, Dave Canellis. Well, yeah. In terms of wanting to prove himself as a head coach. Well, and as you have a owner who fires coaches yeah. like it's a like bodily function. Yeah. I hate to say that, but you know what I'm getting at. Yeah, if I'm, I mean, I'm like, I mean, if they start 0-5, yeah. is Tepper going to go like, thanks but no thanks? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's fired coaches in for, season. For less. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, and I, I don't think it is because I would hope that you would realize, okay, we've got to build a culture. We've got to change the name of the game. We've yeah. got, you know, and, you know, so I, he's got a lot to prove, yes. Mm-hmm. Um you know, on the offensive side of the ball, you got to produce. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I you just you got to show something. Yeah. And you know, if the game plan's there, then great. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm on the offensive side of the ball in any way, shape, or form, yeah. Coaching wise, yeah, I'm a little nervous. Yeah. In terms of like promotion potential, uh, say that ten times fast. Coaches that could be. They could go from assistant to possibly defensive coordinator somewhere. They could go from defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator to um, to head coach somewhere. So you got Brad, Brad Isaac, the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator is Evero. Um, those are the the main guys. Right. I know D'Angelo Hall. Uh, you know he, he. I'm sure he has coaching aspirations in him. Right. Uh, you know more than being an assistant defensive back. Right. I think it's what it was. Yeah. Uh, so I I think. I'm feeling ever yeah. just because you know he he's he's been there he's well, you know he's done that and you know it, he's kind of you know to answer the first question still has a lot to prove too just to say like okay you know we can continue to build this consistent defense and I can be the leader of those men that could be a leader of men for well the interesting else. part though is is I got to thinking about it too is when you mentioned Evero is like and I, I would need to go back and look and fans out there can help us out like how many openings were there at the end of last year in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And how many of them that were hired were defensive coordinators? Yeah. It it seemed like it was more than you would have thought. Was it? Because I don't I don't I don't I know, know to be honest. I mean, with you. I know Mike McDonald was one. Right. And I know Dan Quinn okay. took a job. Right. But those are the two that ring right. the most bells. Right. So I mean it's not many because of course people are going offensive for Well, their head that's coaches, that's the know? gist is it's like, you know, I mean, how many, you know, but with you, if you look at the Panthers, I mean, you know, the, the the best coaches they've ever had are been on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, that's true. From Fox, you know, to you know, to um, sorry, Rivera. Couldn't yeah, remember his name. Right. You know, Rivera Ron, 
to, you know, Steve Wilkes. I mean, yeah. you know, the one guy you had offensive wise, the genius. Yeah, that's true. Frank Reich or whatever that was going to come and turn everything around. Yeah. Didn't even have We've time always to. had, you know, <laughs> so um, there's something about. And I, it, when it comes to coaching, I think the interesting part is when you take a look at a defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator. Offensive coordinator, it's kind of like the bells and the whistles, and you're doing this, mm-hmm. and you're getting all fancy, yeah. schmancy. So like at the end of the day, defensive head coaches are going to line up and play football. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's, you know, there's a story. lot of that, that. You know, There's discipline on the offensive side, but, you know. But you know what I'm getting at? Like, yeah. to, to kind of lay it on the line, line in the sand, black and white, mm-hmm. here you go. That's why I like the defensive guys, you yeah. know, um, to, to kind of, you know, build a culture. Yeah. Which, that mean, nasty kind of deal. Yeah, which I think you can say about what Dan Morgan's done in the front office so far. Absolutely. He's been like, yeah. He's been very direct about no. what he wants. He said, you know, this, this is what I want. This right. is how I'm going to get it. And, and kudos to him because I didn't think that was going to be a, a good fit. Yeah. But I think he's done a fantastic job with what he's had to do. Yeah, and I think, you know, it goes back to kind of the chemistry of him and Canellas too. Right. Working together for so long. They right. know each other. They know kind of what he what each other wants. Right. And that relationship, I think, has helped, at least on the surface, at least on paper, build this team a little bit better than what Agreed. it was like last year. Agreed. Yeah. So That's what I think. I think, yeah, absolutely. So it, it, it's it's definitely you know definitely one of the, one of those things, but I I'm definitely just excited to see what the Panthers are gonna do. You know, like you know as training camp is coming up and you get a chance to see guys a little bit more in live action, a little right. bit more. You know, maybe not necessarily pads all the time, but you still you get to see you know you get to see the route running, you get to see you know guys attempting to make maybe a little more of a contested catch. You know, like. It's 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 exciting. I'll be interesting to see the the leadership role because I know he had some, but I'll, I'll be interested to see the growth of Bryce as a leader also. Yeah, a vocal leader on the offense. Mm-hmm. I'll be curious to see how that kind of you know rookie you kind of step back, take it all in. Yeah. Now, if all of a sudden you realize this is my team, yeah. you know I've got to show the leadership. I'll be curious to see that step too, in terms of and and see it in training camp, which yeah. you know we're what ten days away or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like two weeks, at less than two weeks, they're going at it. So, yeah. I mean, preseason will be here before you blink an eye. Yeah. Do, do you do you feel like anybody in particular is kind of that vocal leader outside of Bryce? Because I mean, I think, I mean, I think you have veterans there, like Adam Thielen is probably one who's um, like, you know, trying to rally the troops a little bit. I could see him being more of the vocal leader. I would love to see Bryce be that, but I'm saying like right now, like. If you had to pick a guy who might be the vocal leader right now, is there one? I don't know that there is one. Because I think that just two is with a brand new coach, that has to be the leader number one, and you don't want to step on those toes. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to see what type of culture he wants to set. Yeah. So I think if he's pulled Bryce aside, maybe he's pulled Bryce aside and said, hey, listen, this we're we're going where you take us. Yeah. You go out and lead. Yeah, yeah. You know, which if I'm him, I mean, that to me, to go to Bryce and go, hey, you're my guy. Yeah. You're going to lead us. Yeah. Go lead. I think that's the first step. I, then, I think then, that's then, the first thing and you every, should And everybody else, quiet. Mm-hmm. And the sad part is sitting there going, who's your leader? Like, yeah. I mean, you know, like um, – sorry, fans. I know I talk Tennessee. That's just what I do. Because it's, it's, the, it's how I can kind of make yeah. it. But, like, you know – Second year, but I think Will Levis is going to be the leader. Yeah, I think he's going to be vocal and be like, "Hey, let's go!" Because every, I, people turn to you and look to you. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's just that's what it is. Yeah, you lead us. Eleven guys go on the field mm-hmm. on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, you're you're our leader. Yeah. You step into that huddle and go, "Hey, we're going to drive eighty yards and score. Let's yeah. go!" So to me, that's it's got to be him. I, I think so too, and I, I think he'll show that. I think, I think the thing about Bryce is, you know, he doesn't come off as like the vocal leader. He, no, I feel like he more, he probably more so is in between the lines. But you just don't, you don't see him being right. that rah rah guy. You don't right. see him being that guy. You know, he's, you know, he's always nice, always respectful. You know, always making sure everybody's doing good. So right. I could see him though take a step because I mean Russell Wilson used to be like that. Yeah. And then when Russell was good, which I don't think he is anymore, but when Russell was good. Um, is that because he has the black and gold on? Yeah, it's just nauseating. just makes me want to. Uh, anyway, um, I, you know, like, but you know, I mean, now, of course, then Russell got ticking everybody off. Mm-hmm. But he became that 
that uh, quiet, you know, I don't know, quiet leader or whatever it is, but, you know, even the quietest of quiet. Yeah can lead in their own way well and you know you would see him in the huddle like all right guys let, you let's know, oh, go you know, yeah no it, it didn't have to be like i'm frustrated i need, I need everybody to line. show yeah. it i need everybody to see it but it was like you know let's you know we're, we're right back in this type situation right I, I i agree with that so i can I, see that i think it's he's, he's gonna be the guy yeah well we'll definitely see uh how it goes jeff anything else no man, hey, we're it's 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 go time, man. It is. It's uh, you know it'll be here before you know it. It, it. it will. You're gonna you know if if I keep blinking and Monday comes up, it's got you know you hey. you, you gotta have enough blinks until you get to football season. It's just, just listen how it goes. from the day they the Super Bowl finishes, I start counting the days till the draft. Oh yeah, or no free agency. Yeah, I start true. counting days free agency, and so it's like come on. Yeah. So yeah, we're right there. Yep. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Definitely. And I think I think um, I think it's gonna be an interesting season. Um, and uh, like I said, we'll strap it up and see what happens. Yeah. Well, Jeff, I definitely appreciate you for coming by once again. Hey, man. It's always always, always a good time. Uh, for you all out there, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube, uh, if you're on Back with Sports or wherever you may be. Hit the share button as well and, you know, share this conversation with everybody. That's, that's the way it is. Even though I'm conversating with Jeff, you know. Even we're talking we're to having you. The, you know, we're having the conversation. We're talking to you all as well, and we want to know what you guys think as well. But we'll see you guys on the next episode of the Keep Prowling Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. And if you liked it, be sure to give me a thumbs up.